So welcome to Cooking Fun with Joanna. I am your host, Joanna Hadaraska with Nutrition in Motion. I am a holistic nutritionist and I basically help you eat better so that you feel better. And eating real food and actually making food at home is one of those ways that it seems like a hard, tedious thing, but we are here to make it more fun and make it a little bit more enjoyable and make some, uh, some more interesting things than you normally would do at home. So today's cooking fun with me is going to be a roasted um, cod with uh, caramelized carrots and I didn't get the shallots, um, my grocery store didn't have them. So we're just gonna use onions, but we're gonna do some caramelized um, carrots with, uh, with some rosemary. And then the salmon is gonna have just some lemon. Um, if you'd like cilantro, add cilantro. I do not, so we're just gonna use parsley leaves, but you're gonna be using like a cup of parsley leaves and, uh, and a little bit of spinach and lemon and lemon zest. So, and of course there's always salt and pepper and there's always some olive oil. And today I'm gonna to use one big pan to roast all the um, carrots on. And we're gonna cut, cut those into matchsticks so it looks a little bit prettier rather than just coins. And then the smaller one for my two pieces of fish. And today I am going to be using the fish that I got from Cena's um, Seafood, which is, it comes frozen, but it's wild fish from Alaska. So I am using the, the black cod from there. Mm. You might be just using regular cod, which is just fine, but um, I may be just in a, in a completely new world with this uh, fresh caught um, wild Alaskan cod. And um, they actually ship it overnight. And it's, uh, it's, it's gonna be very, it's gonna be experimental, probably in a really good way. So I did defrost them. Because since they come frozen, I just put them into water. And this is something that when you want to defrost something fairly quickly, you actually just put it into some water and it doesn't actually have to be warm water. And it definitely, you don't want it in hot water and it defrosts actually very, very quickly. So there's your hidden, hidden little tip, but we're not going to do that until a little bit later. So I'm just going to move that over there. And I've got the scissors so I can cut that package open. So we're gonna, um, and we're probably gonna add garlic somewhere along the way, I'm thinking, just, be just because I think garlic um, helps with everything. If you wanna make it more anti-inflammatory, you can also um, add some turmeric root into it. Um, but then it'll probably make everything a little bit golden yellow, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but um, if you wanna keep it you know, pure white, cause it's a white fish, then you might wanna just stick with the, um, uh, without adding the turmeric in. So we're gonna start with um, turning on the big pan and putting it on low heat. And, oh look, I was having a problem with this burner. So this time it, it I washed it and cleaned it. Hi Steve. Um, and it turned out that it literally didn't light on its own for the last week. So oh, I'm actually kind of happy that, hey, eventually it dried out and, and the, uh, the whole thing is working again. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay. So we're gonna just turn on the heat on that, on that one pan. And I have it on, you know, since I've got a gas stove then I've got it on kind of um, medium low just to let that pan heat up while we go ahead and cut the onion into half moons. And then we're going to um, put, put some olive oil and probably some ghee into that pan and uh, allow it to just start to, to caramelize. And obviously it doesn't start to caramelize right at the beginning. So we have to give it some time that you don't need the close up of my shirt. You wanna see what the heck I'm doing. So you wanna use this big knife because it has actually good, um, a good balance. So you can actually push down on it and you wanna make sure your knife is sharp. And I'm gonna <laughs> make sure my knife is sharp by using my handy dandy um, blade sharpener. So we're gonna chop the end off and I'm gonna save this for when I make my chicken stock tomorrow or my bone broth, and I'm gonna save the skins. You're gonna cut the onion in half. Again, get rid of the skins. 
And you're gonna to try to keep this top on just so that you can hold on to, to the onion a little bit better. I'm very agile with the big knife because I've been doing this for 27, eight years, 30 years, I don't know. Actually, I've been doing it since I was like 14 and I just turned 56. So like 40 years I've been doing this. So uh, you wanna peel off the two layers of the onion and make sure that that transparent layer is gone. And then you wanna cut this into like, um, quarter of an inch thick and just um, slice it into these half moons. You might need to dig your nails into it to keep the onion from slipping. And be sure you concentrate. So I may go silent while I'm concentrating because as soon as you don't concentrate, something happens, it slips, and then you've got a cut finger and then and then we have to figure out how to stop the bleeding and not get blood into your food. Because we are not vampires. We don't we don't need anybody to eat our bloody finger. Yeah, you don't want us as the secret. We're not the secret ingredient. What? That's not the part of the ingredient, no. <laughs> it's only it's only an ingredient when you get blood sausage. Ah. But it's already in the sausage already, you know, like they didn't, I don't know if they didn't drain it from the, 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 the meat when they, um, when they had the animal, but I don't know, but I don't know where that, that blood comes from, but that's probably not something we want to include into our meal. And plus it hurts when you cut your finger, not just today, but the next couple of days. And especially if we're going to be using some lemon juice, you don't want to be cutting your finger. So now I'm going to take a tablespoon of the olive oil and whoops, make sure you hold on to the, the cap too. Uh, and just swirl that uh, into the pan. If you want to give it a little bit of a buttery flavor, you can put some butter. I have my own ghee that I make, so I'm going to put in, that's not even a teaspoon but I'm gonna put that in just to give it a little extra buttery flavor. And it allows me to cook on a higher heat. I'm gonna turn this up a teeny tiny bit, maybe. No, I'm not. I'll do that later when I add the carrots. And now you're gonna take those onions and you're gonna slide it into the pan. And it should sizzle and mine did not, which means that I could just actually up the flame a hair, and I should not be using a knife for this, so I'm going to switch to a wooden spoon to stir and separate. And I've got these um, this wooden spoon with slots in it, so it, it helps to separate the, the layers of the onion a lot better in the pan. You just wanna stir them in the pan right now just to make sure that the olive oil is reaching all of them. You want to try to get as many as the, of the pieces of the onion on the pan as you possibly can. And because we're going to caramelize this, then we're just going to leave that there. You can either rest the spoon on that edge of the pan, or you can use a, um, a towel trivet it and put the... And don't mind me, the um, I closed the cabinet and the dustbuster fell off the wall. So if you heard a big bang, nobody got hurt. It's just the dustbuster falling off the holder. So now we're gonna do the carrots. And again, I'm gonna use that big knife. We're gonna cut them into um, matchsticks. So you're gonna cut the ends off. And it might be easier just to do one at a time. So I'm just gonna move that over. And probably, what is that? One inch to probably about two inch matchsticks. And just so you know, this this part of the knuckle is about an inch. And I, and I don't I think it's like a universal measurement. Don't quote me on that. But on the, the end one you can just cut into into force because it's skinny enough. Um, that these you're gonna cut in half and then cut that into, into threes. And it's gonna be easier if you just keep them on the side, on the flat side down. 
And I'm going to cut them into three so that they'd be a little thinner. And they'll cook a little faster that way too. So you're going to cut it in half, lay it on its side, and then cut it into three. And it's and you're just gonna add this into the pan as you get going. And this one I'm just gonna save for my uh, for my bone broth because it's too it's the wrong size. All right, so that one again, I'm just gonna cut it in half because it's pretty thin. And then the thick pieces, you're gonna cut it into at least threes. You should hear your carrots and onions starting to sizzle. And then this one's just kind of an odd shape. I don't know if they make it a three or, no, we'll just make it in half. I think that should be fine. The executive decisions you have to make while you're cooking. But we're going to caramelize these, so that means we're going to lay it out on the on the pan and just let it um, roast for a good five minutes before we use another one. And you're notice, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I typically do not cut, I, I do not peel my carrots because there's a lot of nutrients actually in the skin that I don't want to lose. So I leave the skin on. This is another way to make sure that all your pieces are about uniform as you put them side by side. You could probably do this with baby carrots too. And then the baby carrots you just cut in half. But I find the baby carrots are sweeter than the regular carrots, which for some people might be a good thing. The caramelizing, and this one actually, it's a very thick one, so I'm actually going to cut it into fours. But the big onion, the big, um, the, the baby carrots are typically a lot sweeter than regular carrots. And caramelizing brings up actually the, all the, the yummy flavor. So it's nicely brown and it brings out the natural sugars that are in the carrot. Because carrots are a root vegetable, so we have to treat them accordingly. Okay, so for me, that was like five big carrots and you should have about, I don't know, a good cup and a half of Carrots cut. This is what mine looks like. It looks very boring at this point, but we're gonna just let that simmer and let that cook for a little bit. And then we're gonna get started with the with the fish. Because this is gonna take a little bit longer, I think, than the fish will. So our next trick is we're gonna um Heat up the pan. We're going to put a little half of an onion into here. So, not a lot, but half. We're going to turn this a little bit higher because it's a little bit too low. We're going to heat that pan up and we're going to put a little bit of olive oil in it. And I'm looking around because I, I suddenly I don't know what I'm doing either. But we're going to go ahead and cut a half an onion. And this part, you know how to do, so I don't have to kind of walk you through it again. It's just the, the same old thing, so to speak. And you're going to cut these into half, half moons. Does that make sense? So they're not going to be diced, but they're not going to be half moons. And see, this is, this is one where I had to peel off that one layer of the onion. But you're going to cut the onion in half. 
and then into that one quarter. And now you're going to cut it into those half inch or quarter inch slices. And sometimes you can just hold on to that tail and use the top of your thumb to keep the onion in place. So those are two ways of making sure your onions get cut without you cutting them. You're going to put a tablespoon or two of olive oil into that pan. And this is a, a 10 inch pan. And you're going to make sure that the olive oil is covering the pan. You're going to put in the onion. And if you see a skin like the one that I just saw, you want to pull that out before the pan gets all hot. Because you don't really want onion skins in your meal. And if you want, this would be a good time that where you could chop up a garlic. So I have one already peeled. I'm just going to go ahead and cut the end off and just mince it. Again, with that knife that has, oh, these are carrots. I thought they were onion skins and they're actually carrots. So you're just gonna use that same knife, try to hold on to the carrots and put some pressure into it so they all stay together so you can cut it evenly with the face part of the knife. And again, pay attention to what you're doing and try not to get distracted. Then you're gonna put that in with the with those sauteed the onions that are sauteed in the skin. And the recipe calls for some some spinach, so we're gonna be putting that in there as well. I think I have a new container here, so bear with me while I open this up. Ooh. Look at that. I have baby spinach with like totally baby. It looks like it actually looks like watercress to me. So I'm going to use my scissors and just take this whole bunch. Oh, you know what? It's minus kale and spinach. That's maybe what it is. I don't know. But I'm going to take this whole bunch and just that's basically a cup. I'm going to put that all into this um, into this can with the with the onion and the garlic. And I'm just gonna cut it into like a quarter, quarter inch pieces and kind of shred it in. What we're gonna end up doing is kind of let this, let this kind of saute a little bit with the onions. And then we're gonna move it to the side and put the fish in the middle. And in this one, we're not necessarily caramelizing the onions and the and the garlic, but we're just gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the a handful of the other rest of the greens just for fun. Because the greens are very high in antioxidants, they're great for um, alleviating muscle cramps as well because they have a lot of magnesium in them. And magnesium helps to have the muscles relax. So if you have rest of blood, eating more greens is going to be helpful. If you eat more greens in the morning, then that will also be, um, the greens also have a lot of B vitamins and the B vitamins give you a lot of energy. And then they also have vitamin K, which helps to keep, thin out the, um, keep the blood, Dinner. And now it's time to mix our carrots and onions. I don't know if you can see, my onions are really caramelizing. I might have to fish them out and put the carrots at the bottom. But do the best you can with stirring it. The good thing is with cooking, it's not a perfected thing like in, uh, in baking. But try to get some of those cooked onions um, if they're 
like mine where they're really brown. Try to layer some of those on top of the carrots so that the carrots end up on the pan, caramelizing, and then the onions don't overcook. Oh look, here's a whole slew. Oh, these caramel, caramelized onions are gonna be so good. And now we're gonna, we can actually just leave them for a minute. And we're gonna go ahead and put some salt and pepper onto the greens. We're going to add some lemon zest. So you can either take a zester and put in basically the skin of half a lemon, or you could take a potato peeler and peel off a piece and then use the knife. Look at that, I got a cutting board right here. You can use the knife to cut it in half and then cut it into these like eighth of an inch strips. So there isn't necessarily a better or a worse way. It's just what do you have available. So then you can take those those little strips of lemon and add that in here. I'm actually going to throw a couple of them into the carrots just for fun. Because why not make everything a little bit lemony, right? So this one's sizzling nicely. I'm going to get the excess off of here. And then we're going to add a, um, we're going to add the fish. So we're going to move the greens over and just put them on the edge. There should still be enough oil in the middle of the pan. Now I'm going to open my packet of So this is to give you an idea. This is the Stina Stable Fish Black Cod. Um, it's a six ounce portion. I have two of them. And what you're gonna do is if you if it still has the skin on it, you wanna put the skin side down. I gotta cut the other one and do the same thing. I actually like how these are packaged too. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually wrapped. So there's some definitely some TLC in in the packaging here because it's wrapped instead of stuffed into a into a little baggie. So you're gonna do put the fish in, wash your hands. And then we're gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper on here. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna chop up some parsley and we're gonna put that in with the fish as well. So you're gonna take a bun one bunch of parsley we're gonna be putting in the lemon juice in there shortly, but I'm gonna let that fish cook a little bit because it's fairly thick. Um, this is one bunch of parsley and we're gonna use half of that without the stalks. So we're gonna cut the stalks off. And I'll probably put this in, into, my, into my broom broth when I make it tomorrow. But you're gonna to try to crumple this as tight as you can and basically kind of shred it, if that makes any sense. So you kind of cut it into quarter inch bits, maybe even more like an eighth of an inch. So you're just gonna shred the parsley. And then you're gonna add that into the pan as well. And 
and parsley is very detoxifying. So it's a great it's a great thing to have, whether it's fresh or cooked. And I like the flavor of the curly, the curly one better. If you want to cut it even smaller, you can still dice it across too with your big knife just to make sure because there's sometimes there's pieces like this that just didn't quite cut so you gotta take them aside and chop them up so you're gonna take that whole that's basically a half a cup of parsley and you're gonna lay that on top of the um the fish okay hopefully you can see what it is that i'm doing here All that parsley on top of the fish. And we're going to be flipping the fish in a minute. But it's a good three to four minutes each side. And then once we get that all cooked, then we're going to add the two to three tablespoons of lemon juice. So now we're going to check the carrots again. I can't remember, did we already put the salt in? What? Oh, I've got some caramelized onions, all right. Totally got them roasted. We didn't put any salt in the carrots. Pardon me? We didn't put any salt on the carrots. I can't hear you. We didn't put any salt on the carrots. All right, so... Um, I'm putting salt in there and now we're going to put some rosemary into the carrots as well. So you're going to put in a teaspoon of rosemary and if you've got a big, the big pieces, you're just going to try to crunch it all with your fingers into small little bits. So you're going to basically crush it in your hand in between the fingers and just rub them together until they're smaller bits. And then you're going to rub it across um not rub it you're just going to sprinkle it across the carrots as best as you can okay and now i think we're about ready to flip the fish i am going to use a big spatula I'm going to move this bowl out of the way so that I have a little bit more leverage. Now you're going to be a little careful, move everything out of the way, and flip the fish. And the one thing that you could do too, and this is what I suggest, is take a fork and actually peel the skin off. You're not gonna need it for anything. And you're definitely not gonna wanna eat it. But it should come off very easily, which means that that part of the fish is actually cooked. So I'm going to certainly heat up just a tad bit more. I'm going to scrape the veggies off the side so that the onions don't get completely, they're kind of caramelizing anyway, which is fine. And then in about a minute or two, I'm going to go ahead and have you add the ta two tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay? Yep. And I turned up the heat a bit so that the fish would kick a little faster. And you're going to put three, three tablespoons, maybe it's a little, this one's actually kind of more concentrated, so I'm going to do a little bit less. And I'm just going to use a regular tablespoon. 
instead of a measuring tablespoon. Go ahead and mix your carrots again. And it should be, everything should be getting that nice brown caramelized look. And one thing that you can do is also test to see if the carrots are ready. If your fork is like, this one's not that cooked, so I'm gonna make sure that that piece gets on the bottom. But you wanna make sure that the, the carrots, you know, right now my carrots are kind of al dente. So they're gonna have to stay on the pan a little bit longer just so that some of those pieces aren't as crunchy and raw anymore. Because you want them to be softer, okay? So if the carrots are still looking like bright orange instead of auburn orange, then they're probably still raw and they need to find heat off the pan a little bit closer. And to check to see if the fish is actually ready, you can actually use Poke it, and if everything kind of starts to pull apart easily, then the fish is ready. So mine is not quite, still needs a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. So that was good. But right, we're gonna go ahead and pour that lemon juice in. So that's three tablespoons of lemon. And if you want to cook the fish a little bit faster, you could also put a lid on it and cover it. So that's also an option too. You could put a, a cover on the fish and then that'll keep the juices in. And it'll kind of poach, poach the, the rest of the fish till it's done. And I think my carrots are done. Otherwise, I'm going to have charred, charred onions. I'm going to test them with a, with a fork. They're definitely better. All right, so how is everybody's, how's everybody's coming along? Are your carrots all caramelized? So I'm gonna go get a plate so that we can actually eat. And I'm gonna so yes, this is a plate. This is my serving plate. I think I'm gonna move these little guys over. That's gonna be my serving plate. These are my carrots. I'm gonna use my cup holder. I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna check my fish one more time to see how that's doing. I'm gonna the liquid drain off of that. And my fish is ready. It's flaking nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then when you serve it, since we flipped it upside down, what you'll want to do is flip it right side up. So I think the way to do this is to put some of the carrots right in the middle of the pan or right from the pan into the middle of the plate. 
I'm going to switch to the spatula. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole piece and flip it over onto my plate. Then I'm going to take a little bit extra and put that on top. And I don't know if I'll ever be a chef because my presentation skills, I think, still stink. But it's definitely better than it was. There's ours. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let us let me take a picture of yours. I'm going to put yours next to mine. And then we can have a nice little photo bomb with all three of them. That is awesome. That looks delicious. So now let's find out if it's delicious, right? Is does Shane eat fish too? What's that? Does Shane eat fish? Because I saw Shane came in the room. Your dog. All right, so who's trying theirs first? I'm gonna try the fish with a little bit of the, the greens and make sure that it's not overly hot so I don't burn my tongue. Because burning your tongue is almost as bad as cutting your finger. Oh, I don't know which one's worse, quite honestly. Burning your tongue. <laughs> I think burning, my, burning your tongue is worse or burning the roof of your mouth. Because then you can't eat for three days. That's, that's, it's delicious. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is really good. The lemon gives it a lot of zing. I want to try the caramelized onions, but quite honestly, this fish is so good. It is. It's flaky. It's tender. With the greens, it's, I think it's really a great combination. So I'm gonna try a carrot all by itself. Mm. Those turned out really good too. So another thumbs up for another easy meal. This one from start to finish is 35 minutes. Let me know how yours turns out in the comments below. If there's any recommendations that you would make. In our next cooking class, which is the second week of um, of April, we're going to be making these things called chicken chorba. It's actually a Moroccan food or Cuban. Uh, so we're going to be making a chicken chorba. So it's kind of a stewy like thing, but I'm going to try to make it a little bit different so it's not so stewy. Does that make sense? Yes. But it's going to have some great flavors in it. It's going to have some potatoes, chickpeas, saffron, turmeric, chicken, um, parsley, some tomatoes, and who knows what other goodness things I'll add in there. But it's going to be something different. We're going to Morocco. So thank you for joining us for Cooking Fun with Joanna, and we hope to see you next time.